Okay, Maestro, hit it. I'm Wally Boat. I didn't know you knew Mickey Mouse. Museum of the Weird. The dawn of a new era. Just a dream away. Can you tell me a little bit about how you ended up working the attraction Captain EO? Well, I got a call and they wanted me to be one of the people that built the whip warriors that attack Michael Jackson. And they said, how'd you like to work with Michael Jackson? And I went, okay, George Lucas ah, getting better or Francis Ford Coppola. And as I've told you, I'm a Godfather freak. So I said, I'll work for free if I get to meet Francis. <laughs> so they brought me in and I started working, building their whip warriors and uh, the jukeboxes, which are the, the kind of rainbow characters at the back. And I got a call while I was on the soundstage in Culver City to uh, audition for the puppet. So I called him back and I said, hey, just go to stage 11 and we'll set something up because I'm building there too on the same project. And then they called and they said, if you don't want to do it, just give us the courtesy of a call. And I'm like, what is the matter with these people? So I walked in and I said, hey, <laughs> and I said, my name is Terry Harden. I'm happy to be a puppeteer, but all you have to do is go that way. And they were like, what? You're already on the project? I said, yeah, I'm building. And they said, oh, okay. So I auditioned. And I think the reason I got Idy and Odie was because I could lift them. They were heavy characters. Each head weighed 15 pounds. And I was able to lift and perform them. And that's probably, thank you, Ghostbusters, because it was a big, <laughs> heavy dog. And, um, and so they gave me that role. And before you know it, I was, um, we had a, a table reading. And um, that's where I met Michael Jackson. And uh, I got to meet uh, Francis Ford Coppola. I was so nervous meeting Francis Ford Coppola because I was afraid I was going to be all fangirl. And I wanted to be <laughs> very, and he walked up and he said, hi, I'm Francis. I said, hi, I'm Terry Harden. And he turned around and walked and I went, oh, Francis Ford Coppola. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm just such a super fan. Um, Michael was late. We were sitting around the table waiting for Michael Jackson. Angelica Houston was there. As you know, she played the witch and the queen. You think me. Beautiful. Two weeks before we had picked a love interest for we like I'm have any say in it. They had picked a love interest for Michael Jackson because you remember in 1985 when we shot this, this was a big deal. This was a very uh, 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 she was it just Michael was on fire. Not, mm -hmm. you know, not to be rude about the Pepsi incident, but he really anything he touched was like King Midas. He could mm -hmm. just do no wrong. He was amazing. And uh when I finally got to be around him, I realized just how amazing uh, he was. Um, generous, sweet, kind, um, thoughtful, and super brilliant, but very young in his mind. He, mm -hmm. I would talk to him like my 12-year-old and we got along just fine. Well, we had to do uh, Francis Ford Coppola. First of all, we're doing the reading. And uh, the only seat available for Michael to sit in is next to me. Uh oh, and he has this huge entourage some of them disney some of his entourage and so he starts to do this reading and um he's he, before he reads he says uh mr coppola can i record this uh table read and of course michael of course so guy number one runs forward puts a tape in front pushes the button disappears and i go what's that <laughs> And so we start to do the reading and all of a sudden, Michael gets, the, 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 he's not getting his lines. He's not hitting his lines and the script is all messed up and everything. And I look over and I'm like, what's going on? And second guy runs up, takes it, hands it to Michael. What the? And Michael <laughs> looks at me, <laughs> you know? And so we continue. And then he says, I not only want you to see, see, third guy runs up, juice leaves. Michael's sipping the juice and I go, that's it. And Michael goes like this. And I go, who, what, what is it? Wait, 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 just wait, just wait. <clears throat> Where's my juice? And he goes, <laughs> you're funny. And so, Angelica announces there will be no princess. She wants to play the princess. If she's going to play the queen, she's going to play the princess as well. And Francis Ford Coppola says, queen, dear, you're a bit old to play the princess. And she says, okay, <laughs> queen, 
but I'm playing it. So mm-hmm. she makes it clear she's not going to do the role unless she plays the full on part. So away goes the costumes, away goes the young lady, everybody poof, gone. Now, originally that character was going to be played by Shelley Duvall, but when they started to put the witch makeup on her, she said, I'm too claustrophobic to get this done. And so she bowed out and Angelica took the role. Well, when they started to do witch makeup on Angelica, she said, that's not touch of my face. Now, the reason Disney wanted Angelica was she was up for Academy Award for Prissy's Honor, a big draw, plus she's a Houston, plus she's quite dynamic. So they didn't want her to walk away. Mm -hmm. And so away goes the princess. Angelica's the queen. So after the read through, uh, Francis Ford Coppola announces that he's always done improvisational rehearsal, meaning that we get together, he gives us a a subject and we improvise, make it up, uh, scenes that have a tie to Captain EO. And so there we are on the soundstage, Michael Jackson, all of the characters who play ID, Odie, Hooter. So you have Tony Cox, you've got Debbie Carrington, you've got uh, all of the different Cindy Griffo. You've got all of the people that are playing these characters, including Puppeteer Cherry and Puppeteer Lisa and Puppeteer Lolly. And we're all there. Mm-hmm. And Francis Ford Coppola se- separates us into groups. So Michael is one group, Angelica is another group, and the puppeteers, et cetera, are the third group. He then tells everyone it's a camp, it's camp Winnebataka or whatever. <laughs> and uh, Michael is the camp counselor. Angelica owns the camp and we are the children. Then he pulls us aside and he says, each gets a secret. So he pulls all the puppeteers and performers aside and says, you're the children and under no circumstances are you to mind Michael Jackson. That's your thing. We go, okay. He goes to Michael and he tells Michael, your secret is if you don't get these kids to mind, you may lose your job. And he goes to Angelica Houston and says, Michael Jackson is not the guy for this job. You are going to fire him and go. So we're pulling on Michael and we're teasing him. (laughs) And Michael's like, please be good. Please be kind. And we're like, (laughs) pulling on him and doing all kinds of terrible things. And he... (laughs) And then Angelica walks into the room. Now, Angelica, if you've ever met this woman or seen her in many roles, you know that she's very commanding. After all, she is a Houston. And she steps into the room of this giant soundstage and you feel the air disappear. As she walks in, all of the air goes away. She says, Michael Jackson! And it's just, we're all, (gasps) and like the alien in Alien, if you've ever seen this movie, as the alien approaches Veronica Cartwright and she's going, (laughs) she starts to do this walk towards Michael. Michael stands up and arcs back as she closes in closer and closer and like Darth Vader does to that poor soldier on the Kessel Runner she lifts him up and his little feet are kicking and she says you insignificant little worm you're fired and she pushes him and he stumbles back it's a slippery sound stage he slips falls on his butt and slides about six feet. Cut, beautiful, says Francis. Michael, however, is on the floor going. (laughs) And they go, you okay, Michael? (laughs) And we're all looking and he stands up and he's shaking. And he goes, that's enough for today. Good job, everybody. And we all disperse. Well, now Michael avoids Angelica Houston under every circumstance. If she is coming towards him and he is walking towards her, it can be going to lunch. If she's walking like this and he's coming towards her, he goes like this. So he doesn't want to have anything to do with her. So when he's finally Captain EO, 
they put Angelica in the outfit and they tell her she's going to be about 60 feet in the air. And she says, no, I'm not. <laughs> and they say, what? And she says, oh, no, no. She says, no. Now she had seen me perform ID and Odie. And she said, get that other idiot. <laughs> get that Terry and let her do it. And I'll do close up. So with Angelica, they had this big table. They lift her up five feet. She'd do her witchy stuff and they drop her down five feet. And then they would put me in the harness and dressed as the witch and put me up 60 feet in the air. And I would do all of the performances opposite Michael Jackson, but he thought I was Angelica. So anytime he walked up, he would go see this gift and he just would melt. And Francis was like, Michael, what's the matter? And he goes, I can do it. I can do it. But every time he looked into my face, he was terrified. He just was so scared of her. So they cut. And he said, Michael, take five. And I said, look, why don't you let me down? And, uh, and uh, uh, since we got five minutes, take me down. And I, and, and, and I want you to take a break. And they said, no, 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 we're just going to go again. I said, look, if you don't want a golden shower, you let me down now. And they went, <laughs> okay. And the guy went like this. Now my feet are behind me in a harness mm -hmm. and my body's in a harness. That way the tubes of the witch can hang down. And so I am flat going ah, all the way down and six <laughs> inches from the floor, he grabs it. And I'm like, all right, thanks, punk person, idiot. But anyway, so I'm in the witch outfit. I come around the corner and I go, Michael Jackson. And he goes, ah, <laughs> and I go, oh my gosh, you know, I don't want to hang up there forever. So do you mind getting your part right? So we can go before Christmas. And he looks at me and he says, Terry? And I said, yes, it's Terry. Who did you think it was? You don't think Angelica's gonna hang all the way up there. <laughs> he found somebody else to do it and it's me. So can we get this right? And he started laughing and he said, oh, it's you. And he said, okay. And so from that point on, he knew that because it was me in there, he didn't have to be afraid. And that's how he was able to get his part right because it wasn't her but he was terrified of her absolutely terrified of her and she was very she's she's a lovely person but she can be quite scary so i mean Mort <laughs> morticia adams like she's, she's oh she's she great does, as morticia. yeah she does obviously scream the fear i and i if someone lifted me and threw me across the sound stage oh, yeah. i'd probably be a little bit terrified too a brilliant actress such a brilliant brilliant actress and she uh the thing i love about her so much is that uh uh, she, she was aggressive through the whole thing. And I used to go to her trailer, open the door and go, good morning, Angelica. And then I'd slam her trailer door. So about three days later, she got really upset. She goes, get in here. What's the matter with you? You have some sort of brain damage or something. And I said, no, but I can see that you're a little upset. And I want you to know that I'm going to start your day with a kind word every day of love and affection and a good morning. And so, you know, that someone, me is so excited to meet you know you and give you a good word and she looked at me with a scowl and then she busted up laughing and we became friends ever since so i think that's one of the reasons she suggested me to be the mm -hmm. person she didn't say that idiot she just said get terry she seems to be able to endure and uh, i got stunt pay for doing it stunt doubling her and uh and then i was doing dinosaurs and she was shooting you you mentioned adam's mm -hmm. family she was shooting it on another sound stage and I, uh, I said, oh, I'm going to go see her. And a couple of my friends said, yeah, like, you know her. I said, I, we did, we did Captain Neo together. So I ran over to the soundstage on my lunch and she was at the other end. And you could tell because she was in the dress. Mm -hmm. Her back was to me, but there was that dress. And I said to her, I said, I said, if it isn't Angelica Houston. And she turned around and she saw me and she said, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> oh the greatest greeting <laughs> oh my gosh what i would give to be hugged by morticia adams oh she's just a, you know, when she great? Oh, that is so funny lady so um, yeah. i do also so a great thing to shoot captain eo great oh great. i bet and i'm sure many of you guys have heard the story of of how I sat with Michael during a lunchtime and gave him 
three witches, wishes, told him I was a genie. And if he had three wishes, what would they be? And his first wish was to get his childhood back and to be able to climb trees and play. His second wish was to go to a mall and not have to buy it. And his third wish was to walk among people and not be recognized. And Rick Baker, who was responsible for some of the most amazing makeups in the world today, including the cantina scene from the original Star Wars, which was kind of like cleaning out his garage, he says. But he's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant um, artist. And uh, he did a makeup for Michael as a Jewish old man. And Michael was, was able to walk around people and not be recognized. And he would bump into people and they'd go, get away from me, old man. And he would just giggle. But, uh, but the thing you got to understand of Michael saying all that stuff, which I tell people when I'm speaking is, all Michael wanted to be was you. You know, here's all the money, all the talent, all the fame, all the fortune. And every day he wished he could be just like you guys. He wanted to shop for his own groceries, climb his own tree, be his own person, move around life without being noticed. Some cases maybe being noticed, but for good stuff. Mm -hmm. And so shouldn't you be proud of who you are? If Michael Jackson spent most of his time wanting to be you, you should be happy being you. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great. It was just yeah. one of the most, ex ex oh, it was just so much fun working on it. Oh, that. I bet. I do want to ask you about the um, opening day of Captain EO specifically, mm -hmm. because there's surprisingly a lot of conspiracy stuff around this premiere. <laughs> um, it's People will do conspiracy <laughs> on anything, won't they? They're so well, funny. So although this is Michael Eisner's fault, to be fair, um, Michael Jackson, this same week, we have the famous hyperbaric chamber picture come out with Michael laying in the chamber where he says mm -hmm. to live to be a hundred. Michael sleeps in this chamber each night since been revealed in one of the biographies on Michael Jackson that he leaked the photo because he wanted to hype up the press for Captain EO. But after it got negative publicity, he kind of hit out a bit. So it looked as though Michael Jackson did not go to the Captain EO premiere. However, Michael Jackson or Michael Eisner, pardon me, uh, claimed that he was there, but he is disguised as either an usher or an animatronics character. Um, you having been at the premiere, was Michael Jackson at the premiere? And what was the day like? Because it seems like it was crazy from the footage. It was a crazy day. Uh, the premiere was going to happen at night. I still have the golden ticket from the premiere that we were there. But Michael was there. Um, Michael wore a teal blue zoot suit and the hat was hilarious. I wish I had gotten to take a picture, but we weren't allowed to, but he had the hat, you know, the classic zoot suit performers with the big jacket and the chain and the big pants and all of that. Michael had that kind of a thing. And then he had a white mask that had a tube that went down. So it was kind of like that sort of, uh, like, this is my cryogenic skin conditioner. I don't know, but it had mm -hmm. two circle holes and it had a mouth like this and it was over his face. And then it was this teal blue hat, teal blue zoot suit with the chain and everything. And he came in at the end, but you kind of got the idea it was him because he was surrounded by so many of the entourage, you know, security mm -hmm. type people that ushered him into the premiere um, that we knew it was him. So he had the gloves everything mm -hmm. but he was in this teal outfit and then he had that white mask with the tube and we were like who's that and i go i'll bet you that's michael and it was it was michael so see so. that's so crazy because they're so the, the majority of the fan community thinks that he wasn't at the premiere because of the the talk like that they're like oh michael eisner just made that up because he's not he's not really here he's hiding they out slipped him the in quite photo. quite on the qt he went in pretty mm -hmm. quickly but you know, many of us had been with him for months. So we knew the, the walk and we knew that we knew and we recognized the people. That's the other thing mm -hmm. is we recognize the people he was with mm -hmm. because he's got this security team and we knew all of them. So we were like, oh, there's Michael. <laughs> <laughs> he slipped in. You know, they slip mm -hmm. him into the back somewhere in some yeah. dark area, turn all the lights out. But we knew it was him. We knew he mm -hmm. was there. Yeah, absolutely. He was there. There's no way he was going to miss it. He mm -hmm. really had a good time on that, that show. So 
I mean, this is a man who had a suite at Walt Disney World. Like, it's his, he's not going to not be there, I feel oh, like. he loved Disney. He loved it mm-hmm. so much. And he loved Captain, e- Captain EO. And I think he just loved um, being around. You know, he was most comfortable in with the movie people because mm-hmm. out in the real world, it was a little scary. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, did you ever see Michael after Captain EO? Oh, yes, we did. Uh, he reached out to me to do uh, some guns for Moonwalker. Um, so it was a smooth criminal sequence of Moonwalker. I did some artwork for him for and some sculpting for him on. Uh, uh, so I did Moonwalker on the Pepsi commercial. Mm-hmm. I did some work on that where his hair cut fire. And, Hopefully you were uh, not behind the hair catching fire. Yeah, yeah I worked I worked with yeah. him off and on like for a lot because we became really good friends. I knew him up until the day he passed away pretty much. I mean, there was probably a couple of weeks before the actual day he passed, but we, we were pretty, you know, he would reach out or his group would reach out to me and say, hey, Terry, you know, he wants something else. He wants something else. And uh, um, his costumer made a dress for me for one of my... Uh, 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 high school reunion, so I just looked oh. super amazing. And oh, I bet. Yeah, you talked yeah. about the high school reunion earlier, like going in there with Michael. Oh, Guns uh, was, blazing. Was, was your dress not designed by Michael Jackson's designer? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, <laughs> like, I, I just kind of was. They're like, "Wow, this dress is amazing." I'm like, yeah, it's personal designer, you know. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, so exactly. So Michael's just so generous that way, and so sweet that way. In fact, when we had pickup shots we had to do and we went back to the studio to do some pickup shots he we all stayed in his trailer with him and uh would sit and chat with him about I mean it was it was this is the thing about being on a movie set we're not we're colleagues Mm -hmm. we're not fans so a lot of these pictures I don't have a lot of pictures but Michael a lot of people were posing with him and um and he was like almost like a standee card and so he said to me he said terry he said you haven't taken a picture with me yet so his photographer took this one and uh and what he's looking at is my portfolio which is why i had work after so Mm -hmm. i said i don't want to treat you like a standy card i would rather just you be my friend but i had no problem showing him my portfolio (laughs) so (laughs) absolutely gotta keep that career rolling so one minute I'm all, you know, oh no, I wouldn't do that. But I happen to have my portfolio <laughs> here. So. <laughs> Which I so. think goes back to more a lot in line with what you said about you always keep that foot in the door. Yeah. Well, he it. was such a great guy. And I mm-hmm. knew I felt in my heart that I could do things. You know, I had this, like I said, you know, Frank Oz says I didn't have much of an ego. I did. I felt, oh, I could do better than that, that thing. You know, I, I did, oh, I don't know. you want a dragon built? You should ask me to do it. I do the best dragon, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but he was super, he was super sweet. He autographed my laser disc. He had never seen a laser disc before. It looks like a record and grows and glows rainbow. All right, we can... Yeah. Giant laser size, gorgeous visual thing. reference. It's going to be about that size. Yeah. It's about yes. like that. And it has, but it's silver and he autographed it for me. Ooh, to the geek girl and it's in framed in my office so oh that's so cool so he did a great he autographed something for my mother my mother was a huge fan he autographed his billy jean album and a photo for her just very very generous generous mm-hmm. uh man and a, and an absolute love and then then we were talking about uh what we love and he said he said so what do you like terry and i said oh i love movies i said oh i'm such a movie buff and he says, oh, who's your favorite actor? And I said, you're going to think I'm blowing smoke, but I love Elizabeth Taylor. Long as she can, honey. Long as she can. <laughs> and he starts laughing. And I said, I said, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof is like one of my favorite. And then Butterfield 8. I love her in Butterfield 8. And then I love her in Giant. And he's like, oh, okay. So then two, like maybe a week later, we're shooting. And uh, he says, Terry. And I am pulled out of ID and Odi, which is you operate like this. And I'm sweaty. It's a hot character. I'm pretty grungy looking. And I turn around and it's Elizabeth Taylor. And I go, oh, 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 oh. And she reaches out and says, Michael says, you're very talented. And she goes to shake my hand and I'm trying to, you know, and she signed my, uh, my cat on a hot tin roof and uh, 
later she came to do the Flintstones and I'm doing the Flintstones and I'm telling mm-hmm. people, I wonder if she remembers me and my back, you know, everyone on Henson is like name dropper, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And I'm standing there and she says, is that my good friend, Terry Harden? As she walks in the door and everyone looks, you know, <laughs> and I go, oh my gosh, you know, she's just, you know, two of the most generous people in the world, sweetest, kindest people in the world. And uh, what a blessing to, you know, oh, that's the great thing about doing films is that you get to work with some of the finest people in the industry. So much fun. Even if the movie oh, tanks. Know. You got to work with great people. 